Uh, welcome, everybody, and it's really good to see some familiar faces in the crowd. So this is our first carpet workshop, and uh, let me start with a little bit of a brief on the company background. It was founded in 2008 by Dr. Winston Ho, who's in the audience. Our headquarters in Santa Fe Springs, California, and the development of the, the breakthrough solution for digital multiplexing using consumables with different barcodes really allows us to build an IVD platform, and uh, we'll be talking about this in a minute. We have eight licensing partners, and uh, in terms of the quality standards, we recently became ISO 13485 certified IVD manufacturer early this year. So just a brief <coughs> of the company milestones based on the, the proprietary barcoded magnetic bead technology. We've developed an IVD platform, an automated system, and it's being validated. Our first GI uh, IVD product is going to be GI pathogen panel, and uh, it was <coughs> in the the beta testing at a couple of clinical sites, and we've completed clinical testing at four different sites, and some of the reference tests are done at CDC as well. So <clears throat> we'll be submitting our results to FDA in the, this quarter, and uh, in terms of quality system requirements, again, we ISO 13485, and we have scalable manufacturing solutions for consumables, and our instrument is built by well-known Fortune 500 uh, instrument manufacturer. So we have a couple of major licensing partners who are taking this <clears throat> our technology into their products. So it's all started with the, the BMB technology, and uh, Essentially, it's a fabricated digital barcodes, and about a thousand times smaller than the barcodes that you normally see daily at uh, supermarkets or <coughs> UPS. And it's instead of using normal the paper material, it's much larger size. We use a polymeric material, and uh, it's a micron size. And instead of using the barcode scanners we use microscopic scanner in order to read the barcodes. That allows us to tag different analytes with different barcodes for multiplexing. So we've really uh, utilized the semiconductor fabrication method to manufacture these barcodes in wafer formats. And if you look at these under microscope, you can see different uh, barcode patterns here and uh, each wafer holds about 3 million of these. And these are really the magnetic chips, if you will, and uh, if you look at it uh, cross-sectional, it's about 5 micron thick, and per magnetic material in the middle is encased in two layers of polymer, clear polymer, which could be optically red. Because of the paramagnetic property, we can put those into suspension and using the magnet to capture these different um, particles so that we can manipulate capturing washing steps easily. In terms of <coughs> application, we can conjugate whether it's oligoprobes or proteins and antibodies to activated surface of these barcoded beads and uh, we can detect by adding SAP as a fluorophore. Because of the, the barcode identification, we can use uh, these uh, different barcodes to identify multiple analytes in the same reaction. Since this is AMP, and for those of you who are molecular um, experts, for PCI amplification, we use one of the primers as the biotinylated and the fire prime end, and after amplification, essentially one of the strands of the product is labeled with biotin. That could be captured by analyte specific probe designated to one of the barcodes, and after the capture, we can add 
SCPE to generate the fluorescent signal. And that allows us to look at signal on each of the, the barcodes. So in terms of detection, this is really for each of the analytes. And by using multiple barcodes for each analyte, we can put several different analytes in single reaction. And uh, we can read through the, the standalone reader or the automated platform that you'll see in a minute. So under the bright field, we look at the barcodes and identify which barcodes are present in the reaction. And also by reading the fluorescence signal, we can measure the <coughs> semi-quantitative uh, measure of whether the signals uh, target and light signals present or absent. So by overlaying those two, we can look at each of the particles as which ones are giving signal and what barcode is present. So that opens up a lot of different applications, and uh, I won't spend a lot of time on it, but particularly we've used a lot for pathogen detection, and uh, it's really useful for protein assays as well as uh, nucleic acid detection tests, and a couple of our partners have gone through feasibility process, and some of those have commercialized the assays. So <clears throat> Dr. Ho has developed uh, multiple patents around this technology, and we have a very strong IP position around this technology, which enables us to do IVD products. So in terms of what's uh, going to be useful for hopefully most of you in the audience, it's really the automated system that we've developed based on BMV technology. This automated system <coughs> is the multiplex um, platform, and uh, it's in 96-well format. It could be on a bench top or on a customized couch that allows you to be a little bit more flexible in terms of lab space. Uh, the automation allows <coughs> two 96 volt plates and eight hour shift for high volume testing and has a user friendly interface as well as the LIS compatibility for reporting. We also have a user defined mode or open channel for those of you who are willing to develop your own tests. So in terms of workflow, start with the extraction. Um, right now we're using EasyMac, but we're also looking into alternative extraction platforms. and. Uh, after the extraction, you do PCR setup manually, but once it's done, you can put it into the platform and uh, essentially close the door and walk away in order to get results from 96 samples in about three and a half hours. And depending on how many extractions you're doing, obviously the hands-on time and turnaround time will be different. For a 96-well plate, you would need four different EasyMag extractions. So. In terms of software user interface, we have an IVD interface that allows to run different assays with the single protocol. So if you don't have a very high volume, you can put uh, together different tests in a single PCR plate, and you can run it with the common protocol. We also have an option to mask results. So whatever the doctor orders, you can program it so that the <coughs> lab personnel does not face a dilemma of having to know different results that's not ordered by the doctor. The software has a result interpretation, so you don't really need to look at the um, MFI values or <coughs> different uh, numbers to, to do the interpretation. It has the LIS compatibility, barcoded reagents, and uh, QC training features. The instrument really <coughs> has a deck check program that allows the consumables that uh, are present on the deck so that uh, users, if you user make a mistake, then the deck check will alert the user what needs to be uh, removed or loaded. We also have open access interface, and uh, it's a user, if you choose to develop tests on your own, you have flexible SA parameters and uh, software wizard that allows you, it'll guide you through different uh, SA setup procedures, and also comes with a deck check and data export features for your own analysis. So the first product that uh, we've developed and gone through clinical trials, GI pathogen panel, 
And uh, most of you in the audience realize that uh, current testing for GI pathogens is really fragmented, whether it's bacteria, viral, um, parasites, different methodologies, and it could take uh, quite a bit of time. And so we've put together a GI panel for different pathogens, including a lot of common bacteria like Campylobacter, Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli, different E. coli pathotypes, uh, as well as C. diff, um, Vibrio, Yersinia, et cetera. Three different viruses, noro, adeno, and rotaviruses, and common parasites such as Giardia, Crypto, and E. histolytica. And these targets really reflect what's recommended by joint letter uh, a month or so ago, and you know, with the exception of the E. histolytica. So it's really right on target. So just to give you an example of data, um, we have 18 different pathogens and 25 different markers. So this is the plot of MFI with the targets on, along the x-axis and uh, different probes from front to back. So some of these targets would have uh, more than one marker lighting up. And really the point is that the background signal is really low and we have a very good contrast in terms of signal to noise ratio. So with that, we've gone through clinical trials at four different geographic locations and uh, we've tested uh, over 1,500 prospective samples and we're in the process of looking at the data and as well as supplementing positives by going back to the archive positives and uh, we hope to submit to FDA very soon. So in terms of uh, additional panels that we're working on, we have a respiratory panel with nasopharyngeal swabs and uh, it includes all respiratory viruses that you're familiar with, influenza, different subtyping, influenza B, RSV, metanumovirus, parainfluenza, adeno, rhino, uh, coronavirus, and as well as some bacteria that we still need to be finalized on. And uh, we hope to go through clinical trials in, um, in the next flu season, not upcoming, but the next flu season. So just to summarize, our platform and uh, key system features. It's a robust technology uh, using the BMB technology. It provides high throughput, but also it's scalable. And if you have a relatively low throughput, you can put together different panels and the same protocol and parameters on the same run. It's easy to use with the intuitive graphic user interface. You have a reporting flexibility with masking different targets if it is not uh, requested by clinicians. It also has an open access mode if you so choose to develop your own tests, and uh, it, it's going to be very cost competitive. So thank you for your attention, and uh, I'll hand it over to Dr. Patel for his experience with our system. First of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, Dr. Ho, Michael, and uh, entire team at Applied Biocode. Uh, giving us opportunity at Poplar Healthcare uh, to look into their uh, technology and uh, uh, their first GISA. So, so today, uh, what I was asked that uh, our experience uh, several months back at Poplar Healthcare in Memphis, uh, we ran some specimens, uh, around 400 specimens, uh, side by side with our current technology and evaluated the performance and the workflow. So I'll get into that. So at Poplar Healthcare, our GI uh, or GPP test volume is very, very high. We do somewhere around 80 to 90, and these days is well beyond uh, 90 tests per day. So every single day we get uh, 90 uh, stool specimens, through our door, uh, we, by end of the day, goal is to report all those results. So it's very high volume. Um, and our lab operation is, uh, the first person comes four in the morning, uh, they open up the packages, uh, access and all the specimens, all the 90 specimens. And uh, our, our uh, hours, working hours are until six in the evening. So the last person who goes back uh, they uh, will end up reporting all the results. So it's almost about 14 hours, and our staffing for the molecular, we have uh, eight medical lab scientists and two processing clerks. 
So this is with our current uh, test volume at Popular Healthcare. So how how do we how do we handle all these 80 to 90 specimens every day? Uh, so we have in our extraction room two easy mags from uh, Biomary U, uh, and as we all know, each easy mag can extract uh, 24 samples. Uh, so that takes to do 90 samples about uh, four hours. So for extraction, uh, it takes about four hours and some hands-on time. And then we go next step to set up the PCR. So all 90 samples we can set up uh, on a single plate, uh, and then uh, thermocyclers that will take about two hours. So here, um, some setup time and the uh, PCR time, and then uh, we go to the next step. Technologists will go to the next step, do the hybridization process, so set up hybridization, and that will take on the instrument about an hour. Uh, once hybridization is done, then another, uh, the next step is technologists go, go back again uh, and do the detection part and the reading part. So altogether is about eight hours for the whole workflow, uh, uh, plus or minus. And a uh, little cartoon down there, that's, that's uh, the chemistry uh, and the workflow of Luminex. So this is, uh, currently we are using Luminex uh, gastropathogen panel, which is IVDSA. So there are a lot of challenges um, with our current workflow. This is one of the highest, uh, or one of the high test volume uh, tests we, we have in our lab. Uh, as uh, I described in the previous slide, uh, there are lots of hands on time, uh, and somebody is involved. It's a very involved process from, from uh, opening up the packages all the way to uh, reporting out the results. Uh, as we all in molecular lab uh, can realize that uh, this process can make it contamination prone uh, uh, entire assay. And uh, the fact is uh, we do get uh, very frequently uh, invalids, so our internal control won't show up, so we, go, we have to go back and repeat the assay uh, and uh, uh, along with the contamination. And uh, so we felt like there is a need for uh, improved workflow. What can we do? Uh, and, uh, uh, and then if we can uh, 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 shorten our uh, turnaround time. So, 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 so these are the challenges. Uh, and then we, we, we learned, I learned about uh, applied biocode uh, uh, going through meetings like this in the past and looked at their system. And uh, it's a highly multiplex, um, high throughput system. Uh, but the, but the uh, attraction for me, the featuring uh, part to me was uh, post-extraction, uh, all the steps were automated on this uh, Biocode MDX3000 system. And this system currently is not FDA approved, uh, and uh, it's in the current uh, development. But we uh, use this system in our lab to evaluate uh, the performance. So how does it work? Um, well, what the features are, uh, easy to use, uh, very user friendly. Uh, it, it's an automated system, like I said, post extraction uh, for amplification detection and result reporting. Uh, and it, it, it is designed uh, to maximize the sample throughput, like I said, 96 samples uh, on, a, on a batch. Uh, and uh, the technology is barcode uh, magnetic bit technology, as Michael explained uh, in, in, in good details. Uh, and uh, um, the automation is for the part of the amplification, hybridization, and detection. So, uh, so if, I, if I think about my current workflow with the Luminex uh, system and Biocode 3000 system, how they, how they compare. Uh, so this GI workflow would include still extraction on my ZMAG. So two ZMAG will take uh, uh, same time period, so there is, there is no advantage there. Uh, if, we, if we implement 3000 system. However, uh, once I have extracted nucleic acid, I can straight go ahead and uh, put my nucleic acid uh, uh, on the 3000 system, 96 up to 96 samples, and that takes about 30 minutes. And uh, just turn on the instrument, uh, put all the uh, required reagents and consumables, and uh, uh, in about three and a half hours, I get the results, all 96 samples results. So hands-on time, uh, about two hours, 
uh, that includes uh, post extraction so it's not actually two hours uh, I'll show you in, in more details later it's very minimum hands-on time so like Michael showed this slide again um, uh, total turnaround time and on, on the bottom there is a hands-on time uh, however, this system or this workflow is for 24 samples. So you have one batch of extracted nucleic acid, you go set up the PCR, and three and a half hours later you get the results. Uh, so what are the features? Again, uh, there, uh, you can run single panel or multi multiple panels. Uh, what I mean here is uh, GI panel, respiratory panel, meningitis panel, STD panel. So the, the, the key here is, uh, Biocode has made a decision uh, moving forward under the universal parameters, uh, all these uh, assays can be, can be run. So that's the big advantage. Uh, if I have, let's say, 110 specimens a day, uh, uh, and then so I will end up running two GI assay, but then I have some respiratory specimens. So if I uh, put that on my second run, so I don't have to wait uh, for the third run. So that's the point. And uh, uh, another good feature I, I, I really like about this, uh, uh, comparing with our current workflow, we can mask the results. If they are ordering only diarrhea panel for just bacteria or viral or parasites, depending on the season, depending on the situation, I report the results only it was asked. So uh, in the beginning, when I enter my order on a given patient, that's the result is only uh, uh, going to show up. So, and uh, it has uh, LIS connectivity, as Michael said, uh, uh, whatever the LIS system at Poplar Healthcare, this uh, 3000 system would work with it, and then it has a uh, user-defined mode. So, we don't have to wait until Biocode comes up with the second uh, FDA-approved test. Uh, we can develop on our own and make, uh, put, the, put the different assay on the same run. And the reagents are barcoded. Uh, uh, with the lot number and expiration date. So I, I use a uh, scanner. It's not like an optical scanner was Michael was talking about for the detection part. This is a, like UPS scanner uh, for the lot number and expiration date. And that gets uh, uh, transferred uh, into my final report. Um, and uh, it has a, uh, another nice feature about decontamination. So at, at the end of the every single run, we turn on the UV light uh, so uh, after cleaning, surface uh, cleaning uh, with uh, DI water and alcohol, we turn on the UV light. So uh, the workflow here is patient samples. I have my uh, uh, barcoded patient samples with accession number. So I just scan them, uh, go with my extraction, uh, and then uh, 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 get the GI uh, assay reagents which has, again, I said, like I said, uh, barcode label. And then uh, I load my all 96 samples into the plate, seal with the foil, put it on the 3000 system, and uh, load my uh, other reagents and uh, consumables. And uh, the first step would be uh, uh, polymerase chain reaction, and the amplicons will be transferred uh, uh, by itself. And, and for the hybridization and the detection part. And uh, uh, patient test results are interpreted by the software, uh, and we just look at the, uh, uh, we don't need to look at the MFI value or any cutoff, other than for the troubleshooting part. I was, I was gonna uh, show you uh, inside of the system, so probably we can look at this. Uh, what happens here is, uh, once I load my plate and consumables and nu with nucleic acids, uh, so it's a single, uh, uh, single direction workflow. So basically this is a liquid handling uh, transfer uh, and then uh, you load your reservoir, uh, BMB mix and uh, SAP reagents uh, and some tips and uh, it takes about uh, around three hours to get the final results. So specifications around 3000 system, um, uh, like you saw the picture, is not a huge uh, footprint. And like Michael said, it comes by itself. You can put it on the countertop or it's on the cart. Uh, we, have, we had it in our lab on the cart. 
the key feature I like to point out here is, is a touch screen communication, um, and, and, and the people in the lab love that. So we don't have to have computer on the side or on, on the counter. And this, uh, this system is designed that the computer screen is on the side. So you don't have to find another place. And uh, it has a barcode scanner. Uh, and uh, like I said, LIS compatibility. And then you can get your results on the USB stick as well. So maintenance, um, a very minimum maintenance on the 3000 system. Uh, all we have to do daily is uh, clean the surface um, and empty waste and UV decontamination on a weekly basis. The fluidic system, just DI uh, wash. Uh, what, what I have learned uh, by using this system, it is, if it is a very high uh, volume and you're running to twice a uh, day for six, five, six days, uh, uh, I would personally recommend that do more frequently than just weekly. And on monthly basis, uh, go and look at your storage uh, space uh, and, uh, and just do the maintenance over there. And for uh, uh, every uh, or semi-annually, uh, spectra calibration. So basically, a barcode system, technical people, they come over and they look at the calibration plate and they run that. And as needed, decontamination, clean the computer, uh, barcode scanner, uh, wasting the uh, emptying the vest and bleach wash. So, uh, looking at that particular uh, assay, first assay, uh, GI assay, it has 18 uh, organisms, including bacteria, uh, viruses, and uh, parasites. And uh, their clinical study is ROS tool as well as uh, Carrie Blair Media. And these are the this is the list of 18 targets. So currently, with our uh, uh, Luminex uh, assay, uh, there are 14 organisms versus this has 18 organisms. Uh, so that's a little advantage for us uh, if we switch to this based on the performance. Um, so GI assay can be run on uh, uh, BioCode 3000 system. Uh, the interface uh, and, and the uh, uh, touch screen uh, is a very good feature. Uh, in our experience, uh, no manual intervention for the post extraction I talked about, uh, and the software uh, is taking your data, interpreting uh, detected, not detected, or invalid, and uh, uh, the report flexibility, as I talked about, masking the results. So I want to spend some time on uh, uh, the, the samples we ran side by side uh, at Popular Healthcare. So the very, one of the first uh, tests we did, we took uh, uh, previously identified norovirus, very high uh, concentration of norovirus, and uh, this is a checker box. So on a 96 well plate, we extracted that sample, and uh, we put, um, uh, we skipped one well uh, with, with water, so norovirus, as you can see, and we ran that. Uh, and this was a uh, uh, very uh, appealing result to us that whenever we see uh, automation and the, everything is open, you look, you, you, you feel like, oh, there is no splash or uh, any carryover contamination or things like that. So this experiment uh, gave us a lot of confidence that high level of norovirus, uh, there, is, there is no contamination. That was the first point. Second point was uh, the reproducibility uh, throughout the uh, assay, um, percent coefficient variation was around 5%. So the second experiment, what we did, we took 300 specimens, uh, what we knew the results from Luminex GPP assay, and we ran on this uh, 3000 system. And on the first column, here you see uh, under the biocode GI panel, uh, for, for example, Campylobacter uh, Biocode had 24 detected positive and uh, Luminex had 23. And the third column, wherever there was a discrepant results, uh, we took those uh, samples uh, and then we did third method, which was sequencing assay, uh, and that is how we confirmed the results. So what I like to point out here is uh, under, uh, within the circle, first stop, salmonella species, we found only eight uh, 
on biocode positive out of 300, uh, whereas on Luminex uh, there are 15. So that was kind of a red flag. Hey, there is a big difference, more than a double, almost a double. So, so when we did sequencing, uh, the biocode detected eight organisms or eight patients uh, totally matched and uh, the rest of the seven, they were non-specific. Uh, so that was kind of little um, uh, worrisome to us. Same thing happened with the uh, Entamoeba histolytica. Uh, Biocode had only one positive patient out of 300, whereas Luminex had six and Giardia. So, so then um, it made me think about why we are picking up so many positive, or, and this could be the uh, false positive by our current workflow. And then when I looked at into the uh, FDA package insert, Luminex package insert, which we were aware of, but we kind of forgot about it, that they say that any positive results you report should be confirmed by another method. So, so there is, uh, and, and in our patient report, that's the disclaimer is going out. But I'm hoping that with the biocode, with this robust assay and uh, highly uh, specific assay, uh, we don't have to put that disclaimer along with the patient report that any positive has to be confirmed by other assay. And, and on the side note, uh, there were two samples, they were invalid on the biocode system. So this, these results are, uh, we took 100 samples, we ran on the uh, biofire system, which has 21 organisms um, on, on their GI panel uh, versus biocode, and uh, the positive agreement and negative agreement was very close to each other. So, so in our experience, uh, biocode compared well with uh, the biofire system versus Luminex system. In this experiment, uh, what, what we did, uh, reproducibility, so part of the reproducibility, we had uh, uh, several different pools, uh, and each pool had about four to five organisms. So we took, uh, uh, we, we ran those pools in, in a duplicate of four reactions on a single plate over five days. So we had about uh, 20 different data points. And this was between technologies, different days, and uh, different lot number of reagents. So we can look at uh, the point here is uh, in the row, uh, person CV, under day one, three persons. So this is within the run, three person coefficient variation. And far end, uh, you see 10 persons. So this is aggregate of all 20 data points. Uh, and if you go down, um, what we found, uh, about 25% was the maximum coefficient variation uh, with the uh, STEC target, so within, within the E. coli bacteria. So, th so after repeating several times within run and over the runs five days, uh, this assay is highly reproducible. And the same story goes with uh, uh, other bacteria, uh, very highly reproducible, uh, very low coefficient variation. And uh, this uh, on the top is about the parasites, uh, crypto, uh, entomoeba, and uh, giardia, and then different viruses. So highly robust assay, highly reproducible. And this is um, presentation in a bar format. I want to talk a little bit about um, internal control or the repeat assay. So what we have uh, found over the years uh, on the Luminex, we have about three to five percent uh, repeat rates. So we go back to uh, either nucleic acid, uh, extracted nucleic acid, uh, and that's the recommendation uh, in the uh, package insert uh, of Luminex. Uh, do one to 10 dilution of your nucleic acid, run PCR detection, uh, and report out the results. If it is a negative result, then you have to go back. Uh, only positive you can report because it's been diluted one to 10. 
Whereas what we found on our uh, uh, 400 specimens, small data points, but uh, only two specimens were invalid. So, so that's a good news. When you are running 90 sample, uh, about 90 samples every day, you don't want so many repeats to go to the next run or the next uh, uh, day. That hurts our turnaround time. So, uh, and in, in Carrie Blair, we did, we did not find any single uh, internal control fail on the barcode. So summary of beta testing, uh, as far as the performance, uh, highly reproducible results uh, we were able to get. Uh, and then uh, it displayed uh, that with our current workflow, comparing with that, uh, it has a potential for reducing uh, false positivity rate, especially around Salmonella, Giardia, and Entamoeba, and uh, low invalid rates. And then as far as uh, uh, flexibility and ease of use, uh, very quick startup uh, with very minimum training, and then uh, uh, software is very intuitive, uh, and then you start the run post-extraction, and you walk away, and uh, three hours later, uh, you get your results. And uh, the maintenance uh, is also uh, very user-friendly. And I, I want to show you uh, on the maintenance in a second. So uh, the training part, um, this is, we, 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 we talked about uh, our current workflow. We talked about the barcode, what it can do, and how is the performance, how is the maintenance. But the training is very, very important on a daily basis. If you are running the lab, if you are working in the lab, if somebody calls you sick, sick and uh, people are not there and you are sitting with the 90 samples. So what we learn uh, by just uh, doing better study on the 3000 system, very minimum training is required on the 3000 system versus Luminex, uh, very, very involved process. So within a one day, we were uh, able to uh, get trained four people in the lab uh, through Biocode uh, uh, team. And uh, the training was evaluated based on the successful run, more than one successful run. And then uh, uh, what we think is new technologies, uh, hiring or the cross-training, they can be trained within a day. And uh, uh, with, with our current method, it can take up to one week. Uh, and uh, so, so that way, we see the big advantage with this 3000 system. Just give you an example of uh, uh, their software, uh, the QC training. Uh, we all know in the lab, as far as the uh, regulatory purpose, uh, quality controls, maintenance, training, and that kind of things. So what I like, one of the things about this software is I can train my QC over the time, uh, over the runs, over the technologies, different lot numbers, and all that. So just on the top uh, bar, um, I can just pick what, I, what report I, I like to see and review. Um, so this particular report is QC trending uh, and for GPP assay. And you can, you can graph this the way you want. And uh, you can just print out and simply file it away for your CAP inspection. So um, that's very useful. I want to uh, spend a little bit of time on the workflow, uh, uh, exact how uh, we are thinking of utilizing this technology. That uh, on the left side, there is a current workflow with Luminex. Start time is 4 AM. Uh, so biocode, we do the same thing. We still have to open up the packages. Uh, and then extraction around 9 a.m. in the morning, all 96 samples can be extracted. And then you go and set up the PCR at 10 a.m. Uh, for the both system. Uh, on the left side, under the Luminex, you see uh, this, this area, this time period, that, that there is someone involved, technology is involved uh, for performing the assay. Whereas here, once you set up the PCR or load the PCR, uh, reagents and, and the samples, you can walk away and results can be reported uh, in the mid-afternoon. And then any additional samples comes in after your four extraction can be easily set up uh, after this uh, mid-afternoon. Just looking at the uh, uh, higher volume than uh, 90 samples, uh, so this is just uh, for illustration purpose. So 
still can be done and uh, by 9 a.m. Uh, you, you go ahead and you set up your, your first uh, barcode uh, run and then you can start your second extraction, uh, second set of extraction of your 90 samples uh, around 11 and uh, still can be set up uh, the whole PCR and you can get the results by late evening. Part of the workflow and the maintenance, uh, what, we, uh, what we require, so this is just uh, comparison, side-by-side -side comparison, uh, easy mac thermocyclers. Uh, the, the, the difference I see between number of pipettes uh, with our current workflow, we require about 11 pipettes versus only eight pipettes. So pipette calibration, buying new pipettes, maintenance, uh, that's, that's kind of uh, uh, advantage over there and uh, all the reagents and uh, no post extraction, our, our technologies, they love that. Uh, and uh, because of that uh, semi-automation, uh, there is less potential for the error by clinical scientists and uh, contamination. Again, this is side-by-side -side comparison. The only point I like to make around quality control, uh, so many different reagents. So there are about eight reagents for with current workflow. You have to keep up with the lot number, expiration date versus five uh, reagents on the barcode system. So in summary, uh, we think this assay and the system uh, is very can be very effective workflow in our lab, handling high volume. So it's a single piece workflow. Uh, we can define that under the lean process. Uh, and it has improved work efficiency and uh, can reduce the indirect cost uh, and uh, uh, reduce waste, so go green, and uh, very user-friendly, um, and uh, physician uh, satisfaction level can be increased, uh, and the lab technologies can be happier. Thank you.